This week on Wheel of Science, we're talking exoplanets. That's the planets of hugs and kisses, right? That's what, exactly that, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> this is Wheel of Science. Hey everybody, I'm Chuck Nice, and welcome to Wheel of Science, the show where we answer your questions about the universe. Of course, I don't answer your questions about the universe. The one, the only, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson answers your questions about the universe. What's up, Neil? Keep coming back to my office, stick a camera in my face. All I can do is say, spin the wheel. <laughs> well, in that case, spin that wheel. Malcolm McDougall wants to know this. How will the James Webb Space Telescope help in the study of exoplanets? Uh, uh, James Webb Space Telescope is tuned to explore and discover galaxies that are being formed in the early universe, whose light has been redshifted so significantly from then. It starts out ultraviolet and blue, but it's so far away, the redshift takes that information, shifts it into the infrared part of the spectrum, completely across the visible point. And this telescope is tuned for the infrared to see stuff that was once violet and ultraviolet at the early universe. We'll also get to look deep into gas clouds to find stellar nurseries where stars are being born. Would the telescope see planets transiting a star? In order to see a planet transiting a star, moving, good word, Chuck, transit, that's the word we use. To see a planet moving in front of the host star, you've got to take continual images of it. You've got to hang on that object to get those data. And the Kepler telescope, recently sort of turned off, was completely designed to do just that. And the James Webb is not designed to do just that. So. You shouldn't think of it as a planet discovering telescope, no. Oh, Kepler. Poor Kepler. I knew him well. I love that guy. We turn the satellite off, not the human being. He, he's been dead for 400 years. Oh my God, he's dead? <laughs> All right, Neil, you ready for another question? Bring it on. Chris Brojanovic wants to know this. What kind of strange physics do you think we could find on exoplanets in other star systems? Mm. There's really no such thing as strange physics. The physics we find here on Earth applies not only here, but everywhere in the universe we have ever looked. And that was not an obvious fact. We had to sort of discover that. In fact, the first person to find binary stars in the galaxy, two stars, say, hey, they're orbiting. Hey, they're following Newton's laws of motion, just like we discover here on Earth and the moon and Earth and the sun. So therefore, Newton's laws apply at least to that distance. Then we found binary galaxies. Then we found nuclear and, and, and atomic phenomena going on across the universe, and it all matched what happened in our laboratory. So what we have found is that the laws of physics apply not only across the universe in space, it applies across the universe in time. That enables us to say the laws of physics are universal, and we mean it. Unlike Mr. Universe or Miss Universe pageant, excuse me, have you compared them to Mars? Anybody on Mars? No, it, they're really Mr. and Mrs. Earth. Just let's make that straight here, Chuck. Well, look at this. I just got a text from Mr. and Mrs. Universe saying, Neil deGrasse Tyson, please go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the laws of physics remain the same, but what about the expression thereof? Ooh, how do the laws of physics express themselves? <laughs> That's good. So uh, you can have big planets, little planets, rocky planets, planets with moons, planets with rings, planets that are icy, planets that are are still forming, planets that wanted to be stars but never made it. We call those brown dwarfs. We can have, uh, so there's all, there's a panoply of kinds of stuff that can form in orbit around a host star. And we only got a sampling of that here in our own solar system. The catalog of exoplanets manifests them all. You know what I call a brown dwarf? Uncle Luke. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more Wheel of Science as I contemplate my family tree. Stick around. 
Thanks, Wix, for sponsoring this episode. You know, I've just got 20 seconds to tell you how Wix helps you to build a professional or personal site. Their website builder is super intuitive. Their templates make you look cool and shiny with almost no effort. Everything works automatically for mobile devices, and you can use ADI, their artificial design intelligence, to get started right away. Yeah, like this. Head to the link in the description and start your site today. That's Wix.com slash go slash StarTalk. Welcome back to Wheel of Science. Of course, we're here with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil, you ready to do this? Bring it on. All right, William Pierre asked this. Have we found any exoplanets that may be able to sustain life? Well, so of the thousands of exoplanets we now have in our catalog, of special interest to us are those orbiting in the Goldilocks zone, not too close to the host star. If it had water, it would evaporate. Not too far away, if it had water, it would freeze. Planets that orbit where water would be naturally liquid in its state. And so we have a subcatalog of Goldilocks planets that are about the size of the Earth, from like half our size to like twice our size in that zone. So yes, yes. In fact, we have a Earth-like exoplanet index where you combine all these factors and then you rank them. So the day we ever get to travel across the galaxy faster than we currently know how to do, and you wanted to visit places in order, you would visit these exoplanets in that order if you're looking for life as we know it. Super cool, but what about, what, what about TRAPPIST, the TRAPPIST system? TRAPPIST-1 is a star that has seven known planets in orbit around it, three of which are orbiting in the Goldilocks zone. So um, if you want sort of uh, uh, seven for one, <laughs> you want one trip, you get seven planets all in one, one, one shopping spree, that's where you would go. Problem is, taking spaceships that we currently have invented and you rode there, it would take 300,000 years to get there. That's slightly longer than your life expectancy. <laughs> so we need warp drives, people. Get to work. Uh, quite frankly, I want to take the trip just so I can keep asking, are we there yet? <laughs> All right, Neil, you ready for one more? Spin that wheel. Vladimir Brutswa wants to know this. Being the exoplanets are out of reach for at least many millennia, why is it important to investigate them? Shouldn't we focus on knowing more about our solar system? You never know how soon somebody's gonna invent a warp drive. It could happen next year, not likely. <laughs> next century, you wanna, you, it's cheap to find planets. You're saying, let's focus on our own planet and on exoplanets, it's telescope time. That's cheap, that's cheap. Exploring the solar system is expensive because you got actual space probes. And even that is not as expensive as so many other things that we do in life. Do you realize going to Saturn with Cassini costs less than what Americans spend on lip balm in a year? That yearly budget for that mission? Don't be telling me, let's do this, not that. Let's do it all. I'm sorry, Neil, but my lips are soft and supple, okay? Chuck, it's your fault we haven't done five missions that we could have. Look at these lips. Worth it. <laughs> Worth it. All right, Neil, it's caption time. We took a picture of you. We put it up Chuck, on Chuck, why you keep doing, why you, why is it, why is this a thing? Because we have to give our members an opportunity to express themselves creatively, and you are the conduit. Besides, we got over 500 captions. All right, go on. All right, Neil, here's the picture. And from what I understand, you like two of these. Yeah, two. There's the future so bright, I gotta wear shades. That's a good one. That's actually a, uh, a line from a Prince movie, Purple Rain, Mars Day in the Time. My future's so bright, I gotta wear shades. I forgot that, because I was thinking of the group Timbuk3 in the late 1980s. They had a whole song called, My Future's So Bright, I Gotta Wear Shades. But I gotta give an honorable mention to the caption, this is where we put the extra Neil when we need him to recharge overnight. <laughs> That is awesome. Roomba Neil, docking station and all. <laughs> it looks like I, they just slid me into the slot and I'm just plugged in, ready to recharge. I got, that's, that's good, that's good. 
It's time for our Wheel of Science poll. Make sure you answer the poll right here. And the question is, do you think we'll find life on an exoplanet in the next hundred years? Neil? Well, I think yes, because there's a whole cottage sub-industry of exoplanet research that worries about biomarkers. These are things, no, you don't see the life directly on the planetary surface, but you see their effect on the atmosphere of the planet. And, and you can't hide that. So I think we will know one way or another whether a catalog of exoplanets, uh, can, where, whether any of them contain life. Any of them looking at us, they would see sort of runaway smog and greenhouse gases, and they, they, they would tell them there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth. Exoplanet Earth. Planet Dummy. Well, look at that, we're out of time, and that is our show. As always, we have to say thank you to the one and only Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks, Neil. Always a pleasure to be at your service, Chuck. God, I love the way you lie. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Chuck Nice saying thanks for watching. Before we go, I just want to thank Wix. From simple landing pages to complex professional websites, Wix has you covered. No need to hire a web developer. If I was able to build this for StarTalk, certainly you can build your site with Wix. The editor gives you full design freedom. Freedom! It's like that. That was my Braveheart Wix thing. Oh, never mind. They have apps that let you grow your business. They have unlimited fonts. Everything just works. It's like magic. No, it's like science. Head to the link in the description and start your site today. That's Wix.com slash go slash StarTalk.